Hello cookbook friends and welcome. We are going to be looking at Korean barbecue. This cookbook I'm very excited about. There are uh, seven sauces that they go over that you can use for any kind of meat or vegetable and we have a ton of different sides in here. So here's just a brief preview of what this cookbook actually looks like on the inside. There's a ton of photos in here which is great. You can see there's a lot of different options and sides. I know that sometimes I've gone to some Korean barbecue places like restaurants and we only have like four meat choices, one veggie choice, and then maybe like six or seven sides. So I was like, how would you get a whole book for just Korean barbecue? But it looks like we totally can and it's something I can learn now too, which is great. So, and plus bringing Korean barbecue home sounds like a amazing thing. So let's go into this in detail. Here's our table of contents. So we have sauces, seasonings, we have drinks, we have chicken, barbecue meats, we even have shellfish and fish. Uh, vegetables, a fairly decent size for like mushrooms and vegetables. We have a ton of sides, kung fu, your leftovers, which very excited about. And then sweet stuff at the very end. So I'm really, really excited. This is more than just Korean barbecue. It seems like there's a ton of just history, Korean food, stuff that you can make pretty easily over a grill if you wanted to, or maybe you can bake it if you don't have a grill. Or uh, I have one of those electric grills that you can put in the center of your table. Those are really fun too, especially if you want some of like that actual Korean barbecue experience. So here we have master sauces and seasonings. Very excited that this is in the beginning because you can kind of do really whatever. One thing that's great too, if you do have any dietary restrictions, this makes it easier so that you can take like gluten out. If you have a, if there are dairy ingredients, I don't think there are, but if there are, you can take some of that out and put a substitute in. Or fish sauce, you know, these are for like allergens or dietary restrictions, so it's easy to kind of mod make your own. Here we have a lemongrass chili sauce, love that. So something you can see hopefully here, it's all in US measurements, no metric. You'll see on the side, which is really cool, this sauce is used in these dishes. Not to say you can't expand and make your own, but I like that it gives you the page number, the dish. So if you're like, hey, that sounds like a really good sauce, here's how you can apply it. So that's really, really handy. Uh, we have this sauce, which I thought was a Vietnamese sauce, but I don't care. This looks awesome. We also have here a uh, magic paste. I don't know if this is like that fermented soybean, but also gochujang combination I see a lot of the time. A little dipping sauce. We have a Korean pesto. I'm already, I'm drooling a little bit. This sounds so good. Uh, so, and some of these sauces are actually kind of a blend of some of these, uh, the other ones that you just saw, which is cool. We have spices too, so you can make your own spice rubs. Perfect for summertime if you want to just incorporate and have something on hand, something a little different. I know I'm going to try to do that with maybe even my vegetables, so I can have just something a little more than just charred vegetables or steamed vegetables you can put like a spice blend on there all right so that's just kind of your basics but now we move on to actual recipes here let's go to some of the bigger ones we have drunken barbecue lamb chops super pretty in the top here right next to the title you'll see just where this recipe came from the idea um the flavor profiles some of the ingredients you might find maybe even substitutes here you'll see our ingredients. We'll have our prep time, marinade time. A lot of these are marinades. Uh, we have how many it feeds, cook time, and then we have our instructions right here. All pretty simple, standard cookbook stuff. Here is a honey soy flank steak. That looks so good. I really, I think this is kimchi, and it looks awesome. I just want steak and kimchi. Uh, and I don't see, just by the way, if you are somebody that needs help with uh, having a menu or just ideas like what kind of sides you can have with this, I haven't seen anything where it's like, hey, I recommend you know eating it with this that's on page whatever or that on page X, Y, and Z. So this book is really loose and you'll probably have to make your own meal plans 
rather than it kind of telling you what to do. I hope that makes sense. Here's our poultry section. Let's go here. This is a barbecue spiced chicken thigh with yogurt nuoc chom sauce. This looks really yummy. I don't know. Let's see if we have the, oh, it's just plain Greek yogurt, but you mix it with a bunch of other st stuff like the foundational sauces. Here we have a turkey Thanksgiving, but we're going to skip to sesame hoisin chicken wings. This looks fantastic. Everything's so bright and delicious looking. Uh, gochujang sticky dr uh, chicken drumsticks. Perfect. And to be perfectly honest, a lot of these dishes are pretty easy. You wanted to just make the sauce base and apply it to things you probably can or the blends and just have it in your cupboard and it'll be so handy to just have on hand for an easy easy meal we have lemongrass uh, chicken egg salad ooh yum definitely more flavorful than some of the egg salads that i've had for sure sold a buffalo shrimp yum oh my god i'm dying that looks amazing Spicy grilled crabs. And something I just realized. So here, this is a, a trout with citrus nuoc chom butter. So you might be able to see this over on the video. Next to some of these ingredients, there's a little uh, colored square. And those are to indicate which sauce or spice blend it is applied to so you see this is like a pink and then we have like a more pink color yellow so these colored blocks next to that shows that it's actually a previous recipe in this book it's kind of nice if you need some of that I need some of the color arrangements that makes it really easy to navigate for me here we have spicy lemongrass squid I want to show you guys some of the actual vegetarian and veggie options. So we have a blackened barbecue tofu, which that sounds amazing to me. There is a cauliflower steak with Korean pesto. That looks amazing. A grilled romaine and feta with nuoc cham. Yum. I've actually never tried the grill. I know I've had grilled romaine, but I've never done it myself. I'm so scared. I'm going to really burn it. Gochujang asparagus. I have to say, I put gochujang almost, I, I try not to put on everything, but it's, I, I love it so much. Brussels sprouts with Korean pesto butter. I might have to get, I might have to buy this book. It's so cool. So there's even, here's how you can actually make this butter yourself. You can just store it. And have it in your fridge um let me see if it says how long it can keep it doesn't say but i'm imagining for quite some time since it's just butter oh my god yum okay so here we have a korean elote so a korean version of the mexican street corn amazing and delicious kimchi salsa make your own kimchi you can save some money sometimes kimchi can be really expensive you make your own in a ton <laughs> and it'll be delicious uh, we have Korean slaw as a great side option. Moving forward, let's see if I can find some of the sweets. They do have the Kung Fu, your leftover master sauces. So here it says you can make a bunch, you can make a bunch of stuff with the sauces itself, but there's like kimchi potluck stew here, egg foo young, chicken and corn salad using some of the leftovers. So a lot of the meaty leftovers. This is a grilled cauliflower and soba noodle salad. Yum. So now let's move on to some of the actual uh, other dishes. But we have like a sandwich matrix. If, again, another way to use some of these recipes, especially the meaty or even the tofu recipes or even a cauliflower steak. Here's a way to make a really amazing sandwich using some of those leftovers if you didn't perhaps eat everything. Pesto matrix. Oh, my God. This is an awesome cookbook. Now we're to sweets. Sorry. If you were excited, I hope you're very excited. We are now here. We are now here. We have Asian sangria float. Ooh, yum. This is a grilled peaches with cardamom crepes. 
That looks really tasty. I like that we're still utilizing the grill here. Grilled pineapple, mint, and coconut popsicles. Now grilled pineapple are, is amazing. And that is it. Um, of course, there's a ton of other recipes I didn't show, but check out Korean barbecue. This is a really awesome book. I cannot wait to explore this book further and actually cook out of it myself. If you are interested in more Korean ver Korean cookbooks, we have quite a few because I'm in love with Korean food. And you can find those on our playlist. And if you do enjoy cookbooks in general, make sure to follow us on our socials at Cookbook Divas. And, uh, of course, to follow, subscribe, comment. Let us know what cookbook you want us to look through next time. Thanks so much.